The Baldwin County Public School System, considered one of the finest educational environments in the entire state of Alabama, has a history beginning in the latter part of the 18th century, when his records indicate Alabama's first public schoolhouse was built in the North Baldwin County community of Tinsaw in 1799. At that time, nearly 10 years prior to Baldwin being organized as a county, the area remained geographically expanse. Agriculture served as king, and family farms dotted every section of the county. However, in this era of extremely limited highway systems, individual communities built their own respective public schoolhouses with the Board of Education supplying teachers to provide instruction. In the early part of the 20th century, the Baldwin County Public School System boasted over 80 separate school districts, each with their own individual public schoolhouse. As time progressed, marked with improvements in transportation and engineering, numerous school districts were consolidated into nearby areas, leaving us today with very few of the original public schoolhouses which distinguished, beginning in 1799, Baldwin County as the birthplace of Alabama's first public schoolhouse. This documentary, commissioned by the Honorable County Commissioners of Baldwin County and Honorable Members of the Baldwin County Board of Education, seeks to illuminate these few remaining and historic original public schoolhouses in an effort to pay tribute to one of the finest public school systems in Alabama. On September 21st, 1906, residents of the Daphne community conducted a meeting on the grounds of the former building which housed the Baldwin County Courthouse, overlooking Mobile Bay from the city of Daphne. It was only five years prior that this exceptionally beautiful building, imbuing all the graces of Southern charm, as demonstrated by its architecture, was deactivated as the county courthouse upon the relocation of the county seat in 1901 to the city of Bay Manette. Wondering what to do with this magnificent structure, Daphne citizens at this meeting decided that the establishment of a state normal school, a state training facility for teachers of the era, would be of tremendous benefit not only to Baldwin County, but to the continued progress of providing well-trained teachers for service throughout Alabama. The first courses offered at the Daphne State Normal School were mathematics, English, Latin, expression in art, with teacher training expenses for the nine-month training period, remaining $90 for room and board, $9 for incidentals, $9 for laundry, and $7.50 for textbooks. During one teacher's education at the facility, her nostalgia reflected memories of being included the honor of ringing the school bell to call students to their classes. Daphne Normal School was created by the State Department of Education in partial compensation to the people of Daphne for the loss of the courthouse. 1901-1902 brought drastic changes to the structure of county government and state government too. A new state, the new state constitution was was adopted in those years and and at that particular time the uh, site of the courthouse w was authorized to be in Baymanette it being more the center of the county geographical center of the county uh, than er, than the Daphne courthouse earlier the da the Daphne courthouse was a beautiful structure and it was a two-story two-story structure beautiful white columns in front, and uh, a, a huge audit courtroom that served so well later as an auditorium. It was just left standing empty. And as, as compensation to the people of that area, the state legislature gave them a, 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 a two-year teacher training institution. And it lasted from about six or seven when it was actually got in operation until 1940. And it died for lack of funding. It was just never funded the way that the other 
uh, uh, teachers' colleges. Uh, at normal school, and of course, we students there called it Daphne Abnormal. Uh, a, a normal school was defined as a school for the for the tra for, uh, for giving teachers two years of, of education in, in that field. And at that point, you could get a Class D certificate. Now, if you wanted to improve that D certificate, you had to go to another another teacher training institution, a state teacher's college, not a, not a state normal school. There were, there were several other state normal schools, uh, but, and there were also some state teacher's colleges. And Daphne was a kind of a feeder school for Livingston State Teacher's College, which has changed its name several times in recent years and is now the University of West Alabama. It, the, the Daphne Normal School had an enormous impact on the education, on education in Baldwin County. Almost every teacher in the system went through that institution. In my, I, I, I entered there in 19, uh, 1930, the, the school year of 37 and the school year that ended in 38. I, I did my two years there then. Came out with a D certificate. Uh, there were about 31 or two of us in the whole school at that time. It was, it was in decline. But it had some marvelous teachers there. Had four teachers, one of whom was a school librarian and three other and, and one was the was the was the uh, president of the college, and he taught. And uh, the other two were teach were, the other two teachers taught the other subjects. Uh, the number of subjects was strictly limited. We had to beg for some mathematics to be taught there. Uh, but I consider that I got a very good education from those four people. I got the same benefits at the college level that I think my pupils in the small school got. I got individual attention. For my uh, college algebra and college trigonometry, <coughs> I sat as one student at the feet of the, of the, of the uh, president of the school. I, I sat in his, uh, in his office and outside his office. And I was free to walk in there any time I wanted some help on a trig problem. He essentially handed me the book and said, do this and come see me when, when, whenever you need some help. And he gave me an examination every once in a while. And, and I figure that I got just as good an education there as I could have gotten in any, any school in a war. Daphne's uh, state normal school was important to the school system for another reason, because it contained the demonstration school for the college, which was the, which was the Daphne Public School. Uh, there were all sorts of power struggles between the county superintendent of education and the president of the school over who was going to control that school. The, the, the president down there thought it ought to be his, and the, and the superintendent of education in Baldwin County thought it ought to be his school. And, but they, they worked out some good compromises. The uh, uh, county agreed to pay the teachers, and, and he agreed to allow the president of the college to choose the teachers. All of that story is, is an interesting one in the, in the present minutes of the Baldwin County Board of Education. Uh, there wasn't enough room in the main building for uh, but one elementary class. I don't remember which it was, probably second grade. The other grades <coughs> were in the old jail building, which uh, was on the grounds of the, of the courthouse building. And there were even, the classes even spilled over into the local churches of the area. Uh, Daphne Elementary School was literally scattered all over town in those days. But every one of the classes were available to uh, 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 Daphne Normal students for demonstration teaching purposes. We were 
made to, pro, pro, to construct lesson plans, which were approved by the president of the college, little less. And uh, then we were allowed to go and, and have a, a small group of children made available to us for teaching purposes. And that's how, that's how we learned to teach. There, there, was, a, there was a bell uh, on a bell tower behind the present college, behind the old courthouse, and it was rung by hand once every hour by the janitor or someone designated by the, by the uh, president. It fell to my duty in the last year to be the bell man every hour. And from the, the, the va my vantage point there at the bell tower, <clears throat> I was close enough to see into one of those classrooms into the old jail and to hear every word that was spoken there. And I would conceal myself in every opportunity in a little niche in that bell tower and stand there and listen to what went on in Aubrey McVeigh's classroom. Aubrey McVeigh uh, was later superintendent of education ahead of me. But, but I learned more from him about classroom techniques, standing in a niche under the bell tower and listening through the open window of the jail than I ever learned over in the main building. <laughs> and I, I, I look back to that as a golden opportunity to learn from a master teacher. I, re I remember that the, that the technique that I remember most clearly was Aubrey McVeigh's use of maps in the teaching of history and geography. He somehow had acquired a marvelous collection of maps that were on rollers and mounted in front of his classroom. And he, he taught with a map down and a pointer at all times. And I learned, I learned along with, the, with, with his pupils. And learn, and learn the importance of that in, in, in my own later teaching. After Daphne Normal was closed, there was a sum of money that had been gathered down there in that community. I don't remember how much of it, how much it was, but a good, a good a, it was several thousands of dollars. And it was in Montgomery and earmarked for the use of uh, Daphne Normal, but it was never spent there. And after the school had been closed, the, the state, rather uh, in the same manner that they compensated the community for the loss of the courthouse, they compensated them for the loss of, of the of its successor, the, the normal school, by building them the most modern junior high school that Baldwin County had ever seen. The, that school was as far ahead in construction as this particular office I'm sitting in is ahead of uh, the, the office that I occupied here with the Board of Education. It was a giant step forward. In the late 1890s, students in the Daphne community were going to school at, in a building on Randall Avenue. And with the institution and the formation of the Daphne Normal School, the State Teachers College, in the building that had been the courthouse in Daphne, students were then allowed to go there as part of a model school that was used to instruct teachers. Now the normal school itself was a school that was grades 1 through 12. And the senior high school and the junior high school were actually called the normal school. And the elementary school was called the model school. When students finished the senior high school, they could continue in what was called normal 1 class and normal 2 class. But students in the normal college, which was the state authorized teacher college for the area um, would attend school from many, they had come here from many other areas and would attend school there and part of the curriculum would include student teaching in the model school. 
The faculty for the normal school taught high school classes as well as the teachers who were in training. In teacher training in Alabama was authorized by the State Department of Education and a two-year normal school would provide enough education for a teacher who had satisfactorily completed that course of study to be certified as a teacher in the state of Alabama. If a teacher chose to go on to a four-year institution and earn a bachelor's degree, the Normal school in Daphne was actually a feeder school for Livingston, but those courses today, just like a community college, would transfer to a four-year university. The Daphne Normal School, or the State Teacher College on Mobile Bay in Daphne, Alabama, was especially associated with Livingston University in Livingston, Alabama. And upon the closing of the Daphne Normal Teachers College in Daphne, those records were transferred to Livingston University and are housed there today at the University of West Alabama in Livingston. Teacher training throughout the state was authorized at the beginning of the 20th century through the State Board of Education. And the college in Daphne was considered one of the highest in standards and in teachers. The reputation of teachers graduating with certifi certification from Daphne Normal School have indeed proven to be some of the most outstanding educational leaders in the state, not only in Baldwin County, but in the state and nationally. Many of them did go on to national, to state and national jobs. The, upon the closing of Daphne Normal School and the building of Daphne Junior High, those same standards for teacher excellence were continued and Daphne Junior High, built in 1939, was without a doubt the most modern of all school buildings in the state. The first one in Baldwin County with an intercom that was run by an electric clock from the office and there were equipment and modern desks in schools, in the school rooms that were unheard of up to that time in Baldwin County. So the excellence in education in Daphne is indeed one of those that's part of the rich heritage of Bowie County. And after that, a group of citizens, the uh, uh, commissioner's court was going to sell the property on the bay where the old courthouse was. Uh, Professor J.S. Lambert, uh, got with the Teachers Association of Baldwin County and he issued a petition for the teachers to uh, send out to try to save the property of the courthouse to become a state normal school. Uh, after that, uh, he and a group of citizens from Daphne, Dr. Mason and uh, uh, Mr. Mix and L.C. Pomeroy, and a whole group of citizens went to see Governor Comer uh, in Montgomery to try to get a state teaching school here in Daphne. Governor Comer was uh, one of the uh, governors who's known for as the educational governor. Uh, with his help, they secured uh, a subscription in uh, July of uh, 1907, and the governor gave him $2,500, but the people of Daphne were to raise some $10,000. So the ladies of Daphne, Mrs. L.C. Pomeroy, who was known for her pie socials, and um, Mrs., um, uh, there were several other ladies that, that are listed. They said that they were the backbones of bringing the, uh, the old normal school to Daphne. Our first president, was um, Mr. Lovett, but he only stayed for about nine months. And then after that, it was Mr. Uh, Baker from 1908 to about 1915. And that's when his lovely wife, Bonnie, started the Vassar chain, which was later turned into the Daphne May Day, which uh, they had May Day celebrations. And the first May Day queen was uh, Mrs. Goldsby of that year. Mrs. L.C. Pomeroy, uh, Mr. McKenzie and Mr. O'Neill, uh, they all had boarding houses that uh, the students could stay at. Uh, it was advertised as a beautiful place on the bay with beautiful trees. They had a horse track, racing track. They had tennis, the girls' athletic club, baseball, 
and any number of groups of activities uh, there. There was five languages taught, math, chemistry, physics. Um, it was known at one time as a class A state school. Of course, it had its problems of always having to raise money. But Governor Comer was one who wanted to uh, eradicate illiteracy in Alabama. At that time, uh, one in 13 white people could not read or write. One in four blacks could not read and write. So it was uh, uh, an adventure in teaching uh, students to become teachers. It was like a community college. It, you got a certificate. You went two years and you got a certificate where you could go and uh, teach. Most of the teachers in Baldwin County received their teaching certificate from the Old Normal School. Um, some of the books, uh, articles that you read in the NIMPH talks about the school, and it was a very classical school in the sense that uh, it had the Washington and Lee organizations. They had their uh, domestic clubs there and they had celebrations um, there. And at this time, people were coming across the bay by bay boats to uh, Daphne and to come to the school, schools here. Uh, students came as far away as Chicago, Illinois, Macon, Georgia, and it was building quite a reputation. But funds was the main thing that was always at the heart of the situation uh, we've never appropriated enough money for uh, education of uh, the people. And then the next president was uh, Dr. Holmes. He was the sixth generation of uh, family that lived here. At one time, he was a state senator, and a lot of progress was done under his management. And then the last uh, principal or president of the normal school was Dr. Murphy and he was from 1924 to 1940. And a great deal was uh, done under his administration. By that time, we uh, got the causeway, and that changed a lot of transportation uh, from coming across, across the bay. He was blonde, and he'd gone to school, and they were known as Minnie's Little Men, and they were plenty tough, I can tell you that. And uh, so Mr. Uh, Noy was getting on to, N Mr. Noy Waldrop was the principal at the old normal school at that time. And he was getting on to little Sam about doing something. And he said, well, says, I'll take care of that, Sam, in the hereafter. And so when he said that, little Sam rent, bent over and he picked up his inkwell and he threw it at Mr. Noy Waldrop and he knocked him out. <laughs> and of course that caused kind of a, uh, Rufus in the classroom, so when Mr. Noy come, come to, he said, Sam, said, why did you throw that and hit me? He said, because you told me you was going to take care of me in the hereafter. Normal schools, uh, such as the one in Daphne, could be found all over the southeast. Uh, they were named normal schools because they set the standard or the norm for excellence. Uh, they were basically a school to teach teachers. Uh, first courses taught there included things like math and English, Latin, art, and many of the earliest teachers in Baldwin County received their education at the Daphne Normal School. Uh, the school was founded in July 1907 with a state legislative appropriation of $2,500. Uh, student costs included uh, room and board for nine months, around $90. Textbooks were seven dollars and a half for the same term. Even their laundry was accounted for, and it ran somewhere around nine dollars. Uh, service was discontinued at the school in September of 1940 after 33 years, and those records from the Daphne Normal School were then transferred to the Livingston State Teachers College, and those files were incorporated into the files of Livingston. And unfortunately, the building was eventually torn down in 1958, having, at that time, outlived its usefulness. I grew up in Daphne, and during World War II, when I was a little girl, I remember that the normal school was still there, although it was not a school at that time. But families, different families, rented apartments in that building 
This was because Brooklyn Air Force Base in Mobile, Alabama had just been established by Frank Boykin, the congressman at the time. And the area just grew so quickly, there was no, not enough housing for them. So the families would live in the normal school at that time because I would go in there and visit with friends, little girls and boys who lived there at the time. And then I also remember during the, during the 40s and 50s when we had the May Day courts at Daphne. Of course, I was in several of them. And the May Day courts from all over Baldwin County would come and use the normal school to change from their everyday, the clothes that they wore into the antebellum dresses to appear in the May Day. So it was used for something on up through the, the 1960s. I, I started school at the normal school. My first grade teacher was Mrs. Jewell. <clears throat> she was a jewel too. But uh, <clears throat> the second year, I w went to school in the jail. <clears throat> and the third year, I went in, across the street to a house. And in the fourth and fifth grade, I went to the uh, Woodman of the World. Uh, building which was separated for two classrooms <clears throat> and uh, following that <clears throat> in about 1939 is when the Daphne Junior High School was finished and we went to the sixth grade there <clears throat> so uh, in the meantime <clears throat> the teachers from the normal college would come up and and teach us uh, various subjects. I remember one class in particular was writing and they made us make that loop and loop and loop <clears throat> to form the letters on the ball of your hand and that was a little bit much at that time. The jail building was two stories. <clears throat> uh, I guess the lower portion was really for serious confinement and uh, they climbed the stairs up to the second story. And the second story was a rather large room uh, with an ad additional room in the south side. But <clears throat> I went to school in that room, I believe, in the second grade. <clears throat> and we had a show and tell. And uh, at that time, my people were raising rabbits. And I brought a little white rabbit to school to show and tell one day. And <clears throat> There was a man that I went to school with uh, that time named Dickie Dreyer, and he was petting that rabbit, and all of a sudden his eyes lit up, and he picked it up, and that rabbit had urinated all over him. <laughs> anyway, he said that little rabbit did what it did on me, you know. So, but uh, <clears throat> the normal school, uh, if I may, uh, the, when it opened in, I think, 1907, they had acquired this very large bell. It was cast iron, 42 inches in diameter. I think it weighs 1,300 pounds. Anyway, it was up on a bell tower and a water tank also. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> a man named Tom Jones was the man who was custodian of the bell, and he rang the bell uh, whenever the time to go to class, take recess, uh, go to bed, whatever. Anyway, it was really, really a big thrill. If you ran up to Tom Jones at the proper time, he'd pull out his gold watch and he'd look at it and, and he would tell you, okay, you can pull. And occasionally he'd let us kids pull the bell. But the bell was very important <clears throat> to the college in that it was set the tone for the schedule. <clears throat> and, and in 1940, when the college closed, uh, the bell was still available, <clears throat> and it was moved up to uh, the center of town across from uh, what is Trown Store, which is now Guido's Restaurant. <clears throat> and in an open lot there, it was placed on a tower. And it was used for the air raid warning in the Black Eye period in World War II. I, most people don't realize it, but <clears throat> there was a serious threat in uh, Mobile area 
uh, mainly uh, at the shipyards where the German submarines had come into the Gulf and <clears throat> as the ships might even go out for a test run, they'd be attacked. So <clears throat> we were seriously uh, concerned here and they used the bell for the air raid warning or for the warning of the blackout at which time you turned your lights out and went to a darkened part of the house if you were going to read or something about a different area. <clears throat> uh, that bell was rung at the end of World War II. A man named Sergeant Smith, an elderly gentleman uh, who has a story of his own, was mayor at the town. And uh, he had the bell rung at the end of World War II, and it was very touching. Uh, it also rang at the end of World War I. And <clears throat> later, uh, it was moved back to the Mayday grounds, and the kids would, would ring the bell, and it was becoming a little bit of a nuisance, and that. Uh, it was waking some of these old grunts on the bayfront, and so Bell was pushed over uh, because it was becoming an annoyance, and it was laying on the ground. And then after that, it mysteriously disappeared and ended up in Loxley at a church. They were undecided as to what to do with the bell. It appeared to be too big. Uh, for them to build a tower around or elevate or something. But anyway, uh, they sold it to a church in Josephine, and they erected the bell in Josephine in front of the Baptist church. In uh, 1901, when the uh, courthouse was moved to Baymanette, <clears throat> uh, it left a very beautiful building uh, vacant and <clears throat> at that time they began to try to do something for Daphne to offset the great loss of the courthouse. And so <clears throat> they legislated a normal college to be housed in what was the courthouse. It was renovated slightly, uh, not, not very much. <clears throat> couple of columns in the front and that's about the extent of it and uh, it became a, a boon to Daphne after the loss of the courthouse with the uh, residence of some highly qualified teachers and of course students and other aspects of college town life and it was great and the students uh, uh, played basketball and uh, baseball and uh, we had teams coming out of Mobile to compete with them and it was added greatly to the social ability of Daphne it's in every respect and uh, <clears throat> so it helped Daphne over a bad hump and uh, it was in operation from 1907 to 1940 and uh, <clears throat> Many of the local people who would not have otherwise been able to go to college were able to go to college. And a great deal of the people who graduated from the college 